So I woke up today and I found myself preparing to make a video. It's really interesting because this is a subject that I've been completely engrossed in. I would say it's been my number one subject since around 2004, but possibly before that. And I think I've only ever made one video about it. Actually, it's on this channel. <clears throat> um, and I've made a lot of videos. So I didn't know when it would begin or why, but I knew it would. And now's that day. So what is this subject? It's got many, <clears throat> many, many words, many names. But the simplest way to describe it would be the nature of happiness. See, even happiness is too much of a strong word. It could be called the nature of peace, but peace equates to happiness. So let's call it the nature of peace for now. And the, when we find ourselves in this realm, because that's what we do, we, we suddenly realize I'm a person. And it normally happens probably around the age of maybe seven. You know, before that you kind of know you are, but then you get the objective idea that you're a person. At that point, you found yourself in this realm. And the story that we inherit about the nature of this realm is that peace and happiness are circumstantial. So I'm walking in this absolutely beautiful uh, nature park and yeah it's beautiful here and it's it's it we equate it with peace and happiness but what's actually going on do we ever take the time to really examine the nature of this peace and happiness have you ever felt peace and happiness one of the two in circumstances where they shouldn't be there i know i have um people often talk about uh, being in car accidents and there's a moment where everything is completely still so I've been in situations where I've been excruciatingly happy when the external circumstances in my life look horrendous and this subject has fascinated me because I grew up in circumstances that were labeled inherently unhappy it was quite a rough part of London and you know, disadvantaged family, so-called disadvantage, this uh, delinquent behavior or so-called, I think it's probably less so-called, it was actually was a bit delinquent, but you know, this is what inner city kids do. And I went through this process of escaping that, which was quite uh, profound, where I, I went from actually living uh, temporarily, let's say, in a car uh, to working at Goldman Sachs. I did that in about six years and it did make me happy but not really not in the way that I thought it would and we've all had this experience where as soon as you acquire something new there's a moment of happiness but it doesn't last very long uh, I can remember when people would buy new cars and be like, look how amazing my new car is I've done the same thing and you go in the car and it's amazing and three weeks later there's fast food wrappers in the well and CDs when they used to have CDs everywhere and the car's a mess and the love of it's diminished it's now become another thing I have to look after so I guess what I'm saying here is the nature of happiness is not circumstantial categorically not circumstantial you can find happiness in any moment because in my own investigations what i came to conclude was that happiness is the moment happiness is what each moment's made of and this sounds so twee and sickening to most human beings but examine it so the circumstances that occur in your life that create this sense of happiness they are permission fields to cause the activity of your mind that's creating unhappiness to, to cease. Let's say you want a better job. You've now created a situation 
which is what most people would do, whereby by wanting a better job, you're continuously acknowledging that your current job is inadequate. And that can make you feel frustrated, disappointed. It can cause your mind to think all kinds of thoughts about your own capabilities or the injustice of the world, which is quite common nowadays. I'm a victim of some situation or process. And then this makes you unhappy. And then you keep striving until you get this new job. And then when you get the new job, you're like, oh, it's pretty stressful working here. I kind of preferred my old job. You know, it's, <laughs> or, or maybe that's the wrong decision. Maybe I should have stayed where I was. It was a much nicer company or whatever it might be. So, but in that interim period, when you get the new job, like you get the letter or the in-person interview and they say, we're going to hire you, Mr. Best. You're elated. You come out of that office, you're like, woohoo, I did it. Check me out. I'm in my flow. I knew I could do this. It lasts a few days and then before you know it you're back at work still buzzing at your first day back and then they sit you next to Terence and Terence is a nightmare a grumpy angry bullying type who resents you getting the job he wanted or some other drama and there you are you're back in the situation of not liking your job so the, the, the point to realize is that moment when you felt happy isn't that you got the job it's that you stopped wanting and that is what creates happiness all situations where you find yourself feeling happiness are normally because you've stopped wanting it to be different but because of the way your mind is constructed you've needed a set of circumstances that you think are okay to stop yourself from wanting. You haven't got a partner, it's terrible. You stop wanting a partner because you get one, you feel great, and then the partner turns out to be extremely problematic. You want, uh, whatever it might be, you want to go on holiday, you arrive at a holiday, it's fantastic. That moment when you first go onto the beach and you love it there, and you think it's really really great and then the next morning you realize the beach is packed with people that you don't want to have a holiday with this happens all the time it happens all the time to everyone this constant yo-yo of happiness of happiness gates open because you agree with the circumstances and the, so the secret to happiness is just simply stop waiting for circumstances to be agreeable for you before you allow your innate nature of peace and happiness to shine. You don't need the new job, the better partner, the holiday, all of these things. None of them is what's making you happy. What's making you happy when you are is the sense of completion. But the sense of completion is always here because all of those things that I spoke about just now that you can acquire, they are predominantly illusory. Where's your last holiday now? Where's your new job now? Right? Where's the love for your partner now? You might have had an argument this morning. You might be thinking of divorce. Most people are, you're not alone. You see, you, you want the partner to be a certain way. It's never gonna happen. You want the job to be a certain way. It's never gonna happen. You want your body to be a certain way. You want life to be a certain way. It's never going to happen. What you do have is your demeanor becomes a certain way, which is relaxed and present. Noticing the self-release of appearances in the here and now. What does that mean? The self-release is continually self-releasing. Nothing can be held on to. This is happiness, that acknowledgement. It's wonderful. How compassionate is that? That you don't need a set of circumstances to make you happy. So what does that also mean? It means a set of circumstances don't make you unhappy. What does that mean? Freedom. <laughs> 
if you're living a life that doesn't make you unhappy or happy you you transcend its contributory nature to your happiness and peace what is that it's called freedom <laughs> the ultimate freedom it's the kind of freedom that makes you go yeah right I'm gonna do that again Woohoo! and I'm gonna head back so this is what I I really love to talk about and I write about it I've made songs and videos I've probably got I've probably got maybe over f a few hundred pieces of content about this topic that I've never released because I didn't feel the need I didn't feel that it wasn't really what I was doing it's there's there's a famous teacher called Longchamper I'm not going to talk about him right now but he says something like this information is reserved for the what is it called the fortunate fearless few the fortunate fearless few because most people when you tell them that the happiness is not circumstantial what they really want to hear is that happiness is not negatively circumstantial so that sadness is not circumstantial so they would be like i'm sad but you know it's not just that's happening i can get out of it but happiness is circumstantial if i make it like this i'm going to be happy and that question that thought is the cause of all wars all murders all thefts all negative actions of any kind all positive actions as well it's, it's it's the result of everything you think that if i'm here and if i go there everything's going to be all right <laughs> it was already all right and we're not even there anymore that's how quickly there vanishes this is what i mean by self-releasing in the here here and now you, you just witnessed it so this is a kind of uh it's an unusual topic but yeah who who knows why i've never spoken to about it before um but today it happened so that's a little introduction uh, i think where the direction that this channel is going to take which is just sharing that because it is amazing like like the the amount of um the amount of um enjoyment that you can extract from the most simple things utterly simple things when you recognize the inherent beauty in all things the amount of peace you can extract from the most unpeaceful circumstances is unfathomable when you realize then that all circumstances are made of peace it doesn't matter what they are and that's going to take a lot of videos to to break down I and mean, I'll try to do it but it's like maybe you get it instantly I don't want to set any barriers to you. maybe you already know this I don't want to set any limitations on you but the, the peace the experience is the peace experiencing is made of peace no matter what you are experiencing the intimacy of experiencing is made of peace the intimacy of experiencing is made of peace